MLB free agency officially begins on Thursday evening, but the big news out of the Tigers organization is another big group has been removed from the 40-man roster, and that is what we will be talking about today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Friday, November 11th. Happy Friday, everybody, 2022. Thank you for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline BetOnline.net has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline, where the game starts. Okay. Big day. Big day, eh? Big day. Um, well, we'll talk. We'll, we'll give we'll give Victor Reyes his flowers uh, later. But let's just start with the news in general. So the Detroit Tigers had to – They it was deadline day for removing players from the injured list. And you can't have players on the IL during the offseason. They can be removed back – when I don't remember if it's when pitchers and catchers report or when spring training day one starts, but uh, it, it's not for a while. For the next several months, you you will not have an IL. So they had to remove a lot, and we've been talking about this day for for weeks, honestly, on this show, uh, and certainly the last few days leading up to it, we knew that this was coming. Um, and I don't think there were any surprises necessarily. I think there might be some noteworthy omissions. But as far as the players that they did choose to remove from the 40-man, I don't think there's any jaw-dropping, shocking ones, except uh, unless you do count Victor Reyes just because he he seems to always find his way back on the Tigers year in and year out. And we will certainly, like I said, talk about him. But uh, yeah, so the six players that were all removed from the 40-man roster were Luis Castillo, Brian Garcia, Elvin Rodriguez, Luis Garcia, Luis Castillo and Luis Garcia, two different people. I thought I said the same thing and then realized I said it correctly the first time. Jermaine Palacios and, of course, Victor Reyes. So those six all were removed. Uh, Victor Reyes, at the time of this recording, has already elected free agency. So kind of how that works is once you clear waivers, if you're eligible for Major League free agency, then you have the choice and you can either say, okay, I'll, I'll accept my reassignment down to AAA or... I'm going to go in and, and be a free agent. And that's what Victor Reyes will do. Smart decision, the right decision. Uh, hopefully he finds some sort of work. I, I would imagine he would for somebody. Um, I don't know if he's a like playoff team's fourth outfielder, but he, he has certainly proved uh, that he can be some MLB team's fourth or fifth outfielder. So we'll keep an eye on that. And it's not totally impossible for the Tigers to be like, Hey Vic, you know, like in, in March, if he's still not signed and be like, you know, maybe you want to come back, come back to the crib. I don't know. Uh, but if he, he will be a free agent and odds are very high that, that he has played, uh, his last game as a Detroit Tiger. And then, uh, Luis Castillo, not Luis Castillo, Luis Garcia. I'm getting my, my Luis's mixed up. Um, Luis Garcia is the only player that's not eligible of those for free agency because he's still technically like prospect status and hasn't spent enough time, hasn't played enough time at the professional level to be a free agent. So he will just go and be in the Tigers minor league system. Everybody else uh, has at some point the option. Again, at the time of this recording, Victor Reyes is going to be a free agent. Brian Garcia also has that choice. And then I think the other three, uh, have the choice to become minor league free agents or will become minor league free agents. So we'll keep an eye on all of them. But those are the six players that were removed from the 40-man roster. Uh, now, again, this the 40-man roster as it stands right now, this very second, is at 40. And that's, that's accurate um, because the IL is, is gone, right? So we have all of, you know, Casey Mize and – Bo Brisky was re-added, and Kyle Funkhauser. There was a kind of a question on whether Kyle Funkhauser was going to be brought back. That wasn't necessarily a slam dunk. So 
Uh, I, I think that that's, that's noteworthy and something that, that we should uh, talk about, which is why I, the host of the show, I'm talking about it right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think that that was, that was a, a noteworthy thing just because there was, and I, I, I was kind of in a camp in the camp that he was going to come back, but uh, there was definitely a legitimate argument for like, Hey, you know, he, he didn't pitch at all this year. He, he, we're really banking on like one really good season at the major league level so far. Like who knows, but it seems like the Tigers for the time being, at least uh, have enough faith in him to carry him on to the next round of cuts, which is coming. And the next one is where the players might be more and more noteworthy. Obviously that makes sense, right? As we get further on in the off season, if there's any emissions from the 40 man or any removals of it. they will be more noteworthy players, but a lot of these guys that, that currently um, that, that got, removed today or Thursday, yesterday, as you're listening to this, uh, those players, I think were somewhat expected. They were, you know, either in our deep dives or just somewhat common sense for some of them. You're like, okay, if we're looking at this list, like these players are probably more of the fringe candidates than some of the other ones. But one of the, like Zach short is still on this 40 man roster at the time of this recording. That somewhat surprises me. I don't expect him to make it through the entire off season, um, but maybe I expected him to be on one of the rounds of cuts before Victor Reyes, maybe. Now, order doesn't really matter at the end of the day if they plan on doing it all along anyways, but just optically, kind of a, a, a noteworthy, kind of weird-ish, not weird, just a, a noteworthy thing that I notice. I have a weird brain, and then that's something that I notice. So that one kind of caught my eye. I don't I I think that's really... That's really it, I, I guess, for the for the weird ones. I mean, we have a, a lot of the the waiver claim guys that are coming in. Like those are all kind of fringe candidates as we get further and further on through the offseason. But like Brennan Davis still on this forty man roster. Um, so yeah, th- there's there's definitely some some guys to point to, and and you can go, okay, you know, we'll we'll see what happens with you as the as the off season goes along. But as it stands right now. On well, I was gonna say Friday because that's when you're listening to this, but things can change so quickly. I don't even want to say that. As it stands on Thursday evening, uh, we have 40 players on our 40 man roster, and um, so uh, going forward, the next kind of shaky situation where there could be some movement happening. Well, a anything can happen at any time. That's something that that you learn very quickly in baseball off seasons. Trades can happen at any time of day or night. Uh, removals from the 40 man don't have to happen in like clumps like this. It's just today was a deadline day because the IL was being removed and they had to. Uh, but those can happen at any point if they decide that they're going to non tender someone. I believe the non tender deadline is the 18th, right? So we got almost a little, we got a little bit over a week. Well, I guess as you're listening to this exactly a week, we have uh, next Friday will be that deadline and, and we could see some non-tenders we talked about it all off season so far right well all postseason I guess I should say we've talked about it a lot right and and how many candidates there truly are on this team that to get non-tendered uh so that's something but the immediate deadline the next immediate deadline that we have to watch out for is in the coming days we have to solidify who we want to protect from the rule five draft. Okay. That is the big, the big thing. That's, I don't want to say looming, but that's like the, the forefront and not issue either, but the forefront, uh, I guess the biggest priority right now, obviously free agency is in full swing, but baseball free agency isn't like NBA or NHL free agency where like free agency opens, then everybody signs. And then like the next two days are crazy. And that's kind of it. Like baseball free agency is, is takes the entire off season. Really? Like, you know, you see like big, like all-star caliber players signing in like February, right? Like it's it, when pitchers and catchers are reporting and like, there's big, huge, like remember the Bryce Harper, Manny Machado off season. Those guys were free agents <laughs> forever. It seemed like, right. And you have winter meetings in December and that's where a lot of stuff happens. So it's not really – like you're not going to see a slew of a ton of moves happen in the next 48 hours. And watch, like I, I say that, and then uh, a ton of moves will happen. But 
I, I'm, it's we I mean, we've seen contracts been given out, right? We, we've seen that, but already. But I, I I just there's there's a lot going on, and I think the biggest thing that we should look out for, obviously, keep your ear to the pavement, listen to the streets when talking about the rumor mill. That's always everybody's favorite game to play. But I also think that. Uh, the, the biggest thing on this front office's mind right now is probably who they are going to, A, protect from the Rule 5 draft. And we can talk about that um, in, in segment two. And B, who are going to be the players that get removed from the 40-man to make room for those players? Because we're at 40 of 40 right now. So we're going to have to get rid of people to add people. Uh, so we'll, 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 we'll talk about that. We'll have that discussion Right after I tell y'all about our friends over at BetOnline, BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis this year. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer, esports, we've got it all covered at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right, everybody. Welcome back here. Segment two of Locked on Tigers. So who are we going to protect from the Rule 5 draft? Now, we've had this conversation, actually. We've had a few times at that. So I, I don't necessarily want to spend a boatload of time on it just because we have had this conversation on this show several times. Um, but I know that we're getting new listeners all the time. And, and you know, you, you don't have to listen to every single episode as much as I would love you to. Uh, so we're, we'll, we'll kind of quickly talk about it. I think I want to start with, well, Okay. Let's just start with some of the candidates that that are that are eligible because it's not necessarily a laundry list, but there is a couple of slam dunks that like will definitely happen. One, Reese Olson. Reese Olson is absolutely getting protected. He had a really strong first part of the year, then dealt with maybe later in the season talent catching up with him. Just a long season, professional seasons longer, or just development problems. He was trying new stuff, whatever it might be. Little slowed up a little bit in the second half of the season, but has shown a lot of raw talent, has shown a lot of raw ability to get swings and misses and get strikeouts. Really good slider, uh, solid fastball. He's he's a ringer, and he has some reliever potential for sure. But whenever I say somebody has reliever potential, people get like offended on behalf of the player I'm talking about. When did that become like a negative bad thing? Relievers are so vital. They win World Series rings for teams. The Ty Detroit Tigers fans of all people should know how important a bullpen is to a competitive baseball team, right? So, like, I, I don't say that with negative connotation. I just say that in his style of pitching, and it's not impossible for him to be a starter and a really good starter at that. But I think he might turn into – he's got to work on the changeup if he wants to be a starter. And he just has to work on being able to go deeper into games effectively still. Um, but his slider and fastball mix is such a good pitch mix for an effective reliever. And I think it also might be a quicker path to the majors, just which is usually the case. Um, but I don't know. Maybe you, you put him on the 40-man and the next year he comes out of the pen. And then if he does really well, maybe you can experiment with him getting some spot starts or – you know, there have been teams in the past that, oh, they're, you know, their rookie year, Chris Sale, right? Like your rookie year, you come out of the bullpen and then, oh, we're going to make you the starter next season. Like once you kind of get your feet wet in the majors, there's a ton of avenues they can go down with Reese Olsen. We, we'll get into that at a later date. And we've actually already talked about it before. But the biggest thing is he is absolutely getting protected without a doubt in anyone's mind. Okay. So. Somebody has to come off. We already talked about uh, a few candidates. I think that Brennan Davis is certainly a candidate. And I also think that Zach Short is a candidate just because, I don't know, I, it, like it, it's obviously no disrespect to them. But I, I think when you're talking about trimming the roster Zach short barely played in the majors this season. And like, he's getting closer to 30. I don't really see a 
like dire need to keep him on the roster. And then Brennan Davis, I, I guess just kind of the same outlook, to be honest with you. So Reese Olsen, definitely a big one. Um, one that I would like to see that I don't think is a guarantee whatsoever is Andre Lipsius, just because I love Andre Lipsius. Okay. I love him. I love Andre Lipsius. He is a on base percentage King. I talk about him all the time on this show. I think that he's going to have to prove that his power will translate to future levels. And as he gets promoted and whatnot, but he hit really well this season in Erie, and I I think the world of him. And I, I really do think – like, he had more walks than strikeouts with, like, a legitimate sample size in Erie. Like, he, he is a dog, and I just love on-base percentage hitters like that. This team desperately needs some of that. I would like us to protect Andre Lipsius. Now, it's not a guarantee – that the players that are eligible that you don't protect are just guaranteed going to get taken, right? We see the rule five varies some years, like three people get taken and some years, 23 people get taken. Like it's, it, it's, it varies just based on the status of rosters around baseball. But so it's not a guarantee if we don't protect him, we lose him. but he is eligible to be lost. And I really like Andre Lipsius and I believe in his future and I would like him to stick around. Uh, back to kind of more slam dunks. Parker Meadows is certainly someone that that they will protect. I would be stunned if Parker Meadows was not protected. Uh, a guy that had a really, I think you can call it a breakout season this year in the minors, has always been one of the more athletic and honestly just like fastest players in the organization. And this year hit and hit really well and started hitting in high single A and then got promoted and carried it over to Erie. Took about two weeks to get acclimated and then started ripping the baseball again. Uh, did really well. Obviously, Erie had a historical season, postseason and everything. Uh, really, really cool stuff out of Parker Meadows. And I, I am almost certain that they will protect uh, that they will protect Parker Meadows as well. So those are, I think, the three that to keep your eye on the most, the only other player that I think is, is in the running there is Wenseal Perez. Perez is another player that had a phenomenal season down in the minors. And absolutely, if he gets protected, he will have deserved it and it will be awesome. And I will be very pumped about it. I wonder more and more every day, if they're going to keep all four of those dudes or protect, I should say all four of those players, because like Perez again, like kind of, kind of like broke out this season. had a had a very, very nice season down in the minors. But I, I do wonder, I do wonder if the likelihood that they're going to keep all four of those guys. And and like I said, Perez and Lipsius are much more on the cusp than Meadows and Reese Olson. Reese Olson and Meadows are are the two slam dunk. They're getting protected. Um, and I would like all four, to be honest with you. But if it's not in your game plan, if you're looking at the outlook of the offseason and you're trying to have a conversation about, you know, we want to add this many players, we want to add, you have a list of players that you want to add, right? Like your Scott Harris guys, you know, you, you, it's 40 men at the end of the day. And, and I'll reiterate again, it's not a guarantee that if you don't protect them, they're gone either automatically. They have to then get taken in the Rule 5 draft by another team. But um, I think that Perez and Lipsius would both certainly be candidates. I think hmm, if I had to say who's more likely to get left off between Perez and Lipsius, it's probably Lipsius. Um, but I think that they're they're pretty similar in how they view them. That doesn't necessarily mean if they protect one, they're going to protect both. But I think the organization views them relatively uh, on similar grounds as it stands right now in November of 2022. So we'll see what happens, but that is definitely something to keep an eye on. Cause that's the big, the next big deadline in the, in the coming days. Uh, and well, I mean, we got non-tender deadlines in a week. There, there's a lot of deadlines going forward in the next several weeks leading up to winter meetings. And then winter meetings beginning of December is when the rule five draft is. So those are the next decisions that have to be made. Um, there, there are some other candidates too, but I think that those are the uh, the four main ones for 
the rule five protection part of it. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't know, like chance Kirby, I guess had a decent season. There, there's, there's some more eligible players, but, um, I think that those are the four that they're really going to look at. And I would be pretty surprised if anybody outside of those four was kept. Uh, Bernier had a, had a good year. Okay. So uh, let's talk. I think, I guess we're going to have to end the show on Victor Reyes. I think that that's probably going to be what we're going to have to do. I, I think that's everything I wanted to cover pre Victor Reyes. So we'll do that right after this. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Third and final segment here, Locked On Tigers. Um, Victor Reyes is a free agent. It's not guaranteed 100% necessarily that he's gone, but at this point, at this point, it would be really surprising if he came back, right? He's elected free agency. The team has removed him from the 40-man. If he was to come back, it would be on a minor league non 40 man roster deal. So like odds are pretty good. He's, he's bye bye. Victor Reyes and I have had a very, a very, I can't think of a word besides interesting. How weird is that for how dumb of a word? I think it is. We've had a really interesting relationship. Um, early on, I was not a believer in Victor Reyes, uh, we took him in the Rule 5 draft in 2017. It's been that long already. Uh, so his first season with the Tigers, his rookie season was 2018. And I, I was not that much of a fan, but the team was terrible and it was whatever. And then 2019, he had a like somewhat decent season. And that's when he kind of really gained I think that's when Jed got his tattoo for those are familiar I'm pretty sure that was 2019 so like that's when the lore of Victor Reyes really started like Jed really did a lot of heavy lifting and if you have no clue I'm talking about and you're not on Twitter that's fine um but Jed Jed UK did a lot of heavy heavy lifting in the lore of Victor Reyes and All of the arguments that I got in with people about Victor Reyes over the last three years, I solely place on Jed's shoulders. And not Victor Reyes, even an ounce. He's a ball player. He's got a job. He just wants to show up and play and put his best effort out there. And any arguments that happen about his effort on the field is not his problem at all. I solely blame Jed. And I love Jed. And that's mostly a joke. But it's also very real. So... And I think he would take pride in that, to be honest with you. I think he takes pride in in, in him being kind of the ringleader of the Victor Reyes fan club there. So the thing with Victor Reyes is I got early on in me hosting this show and in kind of the months leading up to me getting the host gig for this show last season, I was labeled by some people as like a Victor Reyes hater. And that was simply never the case. I, I never, A, I never hate like anyone. Um, but hate hate's a very strong word that I, I, I like to not use as much. But I, I got listed a, or labeled as kind of like this, this Victor Reyes hater. I never felt like I was a hater. I just, in my mind, I was the realist. And I was like, why is there this huge, like, passionate, rabid <laughs> Victor Reyes stan like base? And again, I think a, a lot of that falls on Jed's shoulders. Thank you very much, Jed. Um, I, I truly, I, I, <laughs> Jed, Jed's a great dude. Um, all, all jokes for real. But within that time period, there was people that would then get into arguments with me on the internet or, or in person even. And uh, like my friends and family, <laughs> like Victor Reyes really ran around and, and did circles in my head for a long time because I, I had a lot of people that, that really were like, he's, he's like decent and he hits for an average decent really well. And, and I had one, I got into an argument with one dude one time that said like he had a borderline elite profile. And I was like, what the heck is happening right now? 
and I was just dumbfounded by how player how how fans and and everybody was interpreting this Victor Reyes player and and I how can you not love him <laughs> like after it all man like I'm I'm going through and and I'm very exhausted arguing with people at, at one point like daily it felt like I was getting into an argument with somebody in my life or on the internet about Victor Reyes and at some point I just accepted him for, for what he was and accepted the situation for what it was. And that was the Tigers were not a very good baseball team. And they had a player that a lot of people jokingly or not really cared about. And like, who am I to, to step in anyone's way or, or spill anybody's Cheerios over Victor Reyes when the team has nothing to really root for anyways. So, like, how can you not love Victor Reyes? Right? How can you not? How can you not get that notification about Victor Reyes no longer being on the team and not a little part of you just like, dang, like the Victor Reyes era is really over. A, I never thought this day would come because he was he was – not with a, a negative connotation, but he was like a rash in the sense that he just like never seemed to go away. He's a rule five pick that lasted five years. You know how impressive that is? Go look up the history of rule five draft picks. Like 90 something percent of them don't even make it through one season. Most teams, good teams, don't even pick people in the rule five draft. Al Avila was obsessed with it for Lord knows what reason. The team was terrible. So like might as well take your shots in the dark, I guess. No disrespect there. But golly, rule five picks don't turn out being good. To be, to be a rule five pick, you have to be somebody that has spent over five years in the minor league since being entered into the organization and playing professionally and not be on the 40-man roster. There are not, there's not too much talent going around that it's been in the minors for five years and still isn't on a 40 man. Okay. Major league talent. I should say, obviously all these players are, are, are incredibly talented and they're the best athletes on the planet, but there's not a lot of major league caliber players just like hanging in the wings <laughs> ready for that. So the, the history of the rule five draft is very slim and Victor Reyes played five years at the major league level for the team that took him in the Rule 5 draft. I don't care how bad of a team it is. I don't care about any of the caliber of the roster or whatnot. That is objectively impressive as all heck, and he deserves a ton of credit. For real. And this front office, I'm not going to say they deserve credit because I think it was an accident, but... Victor Reyes' rookie season, he played in 100 games and had a negative one-and-a-half win season. Negative 1.4 war. He had a 239 on base percentage and a 288 slug. That is a 526 OPS. A 37 WRC+. Plus. And yet, this front office looked around and said, Rule 5 pick? That was just literally one of the worst players in the game of baseball if you ranked everything by war? We got to bring that dude back. And guess what? He turned around, and in 2019, on one of the worst baseball teams I've ever seen, and I did watch 03, he put up a one-and-a-half win season on the positive side of things. And he slugged for 431. Now, granted, 2019, peak juiced ball baseball, but still a 304 batting average in 70 games played. He never draws walks. He doesn't strike out too terribly much, but he never draws walks. He is an league average defender at best. He does not hit for a ton of power, but. Credit where credit is due. Like, th this is not a terrible career stat line. 
264 batting average, a 294 OBP, and a 379 slug is a 673 OPS in his career. Is that a starter on a playoff team? I would hope not. But objectively speaking, Victor Reyes proved that he can be a somewhat effective and productive fourth outfielder for a major league baseball team over the last five years. Again, this is since his rookie season, that was a negative 1.4 win. One positive 1.4 in 2019 in just 70 games, mind you. Okay, that's that, that less than half of the season he played it and had a win and a half. He was on pace for almost a three-win season. Goodness gracious. 2020 and only 57 games, a 0.6 war. That's also not bad for only playing in 57 games. 60 games, what? That's that's a third, a uh, little less than a third of the season. 61, 21, 80. Yeah, a little more. Sorry. I meant less. That's how my brain works. More, A little more than a third. Like that, you know, that's not terrible. 0 0.3 war in 2021, above replacement level. And then in 2022, he was a negative 0 0.2 win player. So he's going to give you a round replacement level, around zero. His career war is 0 0.6. He's going to give you a round replacement level production. And that's what, I don't know, middle of the road or bottom level MLB teams, that's kind of what you're looking for in a fourth outfielder. And that's what I think, and that's what I've always said that he could be. And that's why I never understood why everyone was so mad at me when I would say it. I was like, am I, are we watching the same player? Like fourth outfielder, he could be something as a fourth outfielder, but as a fourth outfielder, I don't know. Just the, the the career that was Victor Reyes, I, I would feel remiss if I did not take at least one segment and just talk about and give him his flowers that he very much deserves. Again, this is objectively a Rule 5 success story. How crazy is that? How crazy is that? Victor Reyes is a Rule 5 success story. Because, again, like, seriously, if you're not familiar, look it up. There's not a lot of players that even make it past the season on the team that they drafted in the Rule 5. Nonetheless, five. Greatest Rule 5 picks ever would be a fantastic episode. Um, I should have done that during the lockout last year when I had nothing to talk about. But, like, Josh Hamilton is, like, one. Like, it's a, it's a short list. It's a real short list. And then when you're just looking on a year-to-year -year basis, the amount of players that make it past their past the offseason after they were drafted in the Rule 5 is super slim. So props to Victor Reyes, man. Deserves his flowers wherever his career ends up taking him. I'm going to say he either gets a fourth outfield job for like a low-level team that's not really that competitive at the major league level. Or he gets a 40-man roster spot, but a minor league contract on as like a depth outfielder on a competitive team. I think he's right in that kind of in between. He's about to be, this next year will be his age 28 season. I think he's right in that range which with, uh, with where he, he will end up. And again, it's not completely impossible. If he's unsigned miraculously by March, and spring training games are being played, and he's still out there, and the Tigers can move some players back on the IL. It's not completely impossible for us to give old Vic a phone call, but um, I doubt it. I think that this is probably the end of the road. So shout out Victor Reyes. Shout out Jed, the dog. And uh, yeah, and end of an era for sure. For sure. Victor Reyes is... Like when I think of the 2019 Tigers, Victor Reyes is one of the first names that pops into my head. When I honestly, when I just think of not really in 2022 for whatever reason, even though he played in 92 games this year, not really since AJ took over, he he doesn't really pop out as um, like in the last two years as somebody in that era. But like 2018 to 2020, Victor Reyes is one of the first names. That pops into my head when when remembering those teams or like players I think of from that era.
a success story in, in the Rule 5 draft, uh, made a career out of being a Rule 5 pick, all the credit in the world, and best of luck, truly best of luck to whatever happens next because um, that dude deserves work and he will get it. Again, whether it's a minor league depth deal or whether it's a fourth outfielder at a major league position, um, he, he will get work somewhere. So we'll keep an eye on it as the offseason goes along. That's all I got. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Um, Yeah, I think that's all I got. Shout out Vic Reyes, baby. Oh, shout out Vic Reyes. I can't believe, man. 2019 Scott Bentley would be would be appalled that 2022 Scott Bentley is uh is is uh, again like I never I never like really truly disliked Victor Reyes but um I would be confused I would be perplexed at the send off but uh here we are here we are what a guy peace and love uh have a good weekend and we'll be back on Sunday, hopefully recapping a fun weekend of maybe moves, uh, maybe some more 40-man stuff, maybe some free agent rumors, all that. The offseason is officially, officially here. So we're going to have stuff to talk about every day. Peace and love. Going to therapy's dope. I appreciate each and every one of y'all so unbelievably much. Go Tigers, baby.